beauty. Who knows when evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> the shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is, in reality, Lamont Cranston. Wealthy young man about town, several years ago, while in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. Hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend, Margot Lane, is the only person to who, who knows whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Tonight's episode, Mind Over Murder, as we tune in, we hear Cranston talk to Margot. Margot, I overheard Carter, the attorney for the Strand Sisters, speaking over the phone to Brooks, the butler at the mansion. I can only hear one side of the conversation, but I'm sure something is wrong. With Miss Abigail and Miss Matilda gone, if anything should happen to Miss Emily, you will have control over the entire Strand fortune. Do you think Brooks is an accomplice to some scheme of Carter's? I'm not sure, but I doubt very much that both sisters committed suicide. <laughs> you mean you think that they were murdered? Oh, poor Miss Emily. I'm afraid so, but I'm going to have to get into the mansion tonight to find out. This will have to be a job for the Shadow. Meanwhile, back at the mansion, we look on a conversation between Brooks and Miss Emily Strand. Dear Brooks, we can be married now. We've got all the money now that both my sisters are gone. You old fool. Why would I ever want to marry a dry old spinster like you? What are you saying? You told me that you loved me. Why, I, I helped you get rid of my sisters. I can't stand the sight of you. Oh no, you're all I've ever wanted. I have nothing to live for if you desert me. I can't go all alone like this. There is a way out, Miss Emily. You could join the sisters. What are you saying? You see this straight razor? See how sharp it is? One quick stroke and we'll be all over. You wouldn't be alone anymore. I'm going now. Shall I leave the razor with you? Yes, Brooks. I'll take the razor. Will that be all, Miss Emily? No, that's not all. I have the razor now and I'm gonna slit your throat. You devil, get your hands off me. You thought you could talk me into killing myself, didn't you? All you ever wanted was my money. I've been such a fool. If anyone must die, it should be you. You fool, one blow is all I need for you. Then I'll slit your throat. Now I'll just carry you downstairs and throw your body in the furnace. <laughs> yes, Brooks, the flames would shout death, but for you, not her. That voice, where are you? Show yourself. Carter has confessed. You'll both be punished for your crimes. You'll never take me in. Now back away and let me out, or I'll shoot. Shoot then. I'm right at your elbow. <laughs> Sorry, I meant your other elbow. <laughs> All right then, I'll shoot Miss Emily. I can see her. No, you don't, Brooks. Ah! Now drop the gun. Ah, my wrist. You almost broke it. Now that I've relieved you of your gun, here's what. Here's something you've had coming for a long while. And here's another for Miss Abigail and Miss Matilda. <laughs> now you can just lie there beside Miss Emily until the police arrive. The shadow will see that justice is done. Join us next week when our champion of law and order will once again triumph over evil in an episode entitled Etched in Acid. <laughs>